My neighbor called the landlord complaining that I was too loud and demanded I be evicted. She didn't know I was the landlord. The complaint started three months after Carol moved into 4B. Noise complaints, parking disputes, accusations that I was violating lease terms by having friends over past 10 p.m. Every week she'd call the property management company demanding action against the irresponsible tenant in 4A who clearly doesn't respect other residents. I live quietly, work from home, keep normal hours, occasionally have my buddy Jake over to watch football on Sundays. Nothing excessive, but Carol treated every conversation in the hallway like a personal assault on her peace. The breaking point came last Tuesday. I was carrying groceries upstairs when she confronted me in the stairwell. I've had enough, she said, blocking my path. Your music, your friends, your complete disregard for everyone else in this building. I'm calling the landlord right now. She pulled out her phone and dialed while staring me down. Yes, this is Carol in 4B. I need the owner to evict my neighbor immediately. He's making this building unlivable. I listened to her list my crimes. Loud music after 9 p.m., excessive visitors, disrespectful attitude toward long-term residents who deserve better treatment. I've been a model tenant for six months, she continued. But this guy treats the place like a frat house. I shouldn't have to deal with this. After hanging up, she smiled smugly. The owner promised to review your lease personally. You'll probably get your eviction notice this week. That's unfortunate, I said, shifting my grocery bags. Maybe next time you'll think twice before moving into a building with responsible adults. That evening, I pulled out my laptop and reviewed Carol's lease agreement and complaint history. She'd filed 14 formal complaints in six months, noise violations, parking disputes, demands for building-wide quiet hours, requests to ban visitors after 8 p.m. The next morning I knocked on Carol's door wearing my property management polo shirt and carrying a clipboard. She opened the door looking triumphant. You must be from the management company. Thank you for coming so quickly. Actually, I'm the owner, David Martinez. We spoke yesterday about your concerns regarding 4A. Her confident smile faltered. The owner? But you look so young. I bought this building two years ago. Converted it from apartments to condos. Kept a few units as rentals. Carol's face was cycling through confusion. Wait, if you're the owner, then who lives in 4A? That would be me. I live in my own building. The color drained completely from her face. So when you called yesterday demanding I evict the tenant in 4A for being too loud, you were asking me to evict myself from my own property. She started stammering. I didn't know. You never said. How was I supposed to know that your neighbor owns the building? You weren't. But you also weren't supposed to file 14 noise complaints in six months against someone who works from home and keeps normal hours. I pulled out my clipboard. Carol, I've reviewed every complaint you filed. Music after 9 p.m. on a Tuesday. I was watching Netflix at normal volume. Excessive visitors. My friend Jake comes over Sundays to watch football. Dis respectful attitude? I've said hello twice in six months. But the noise. I installed a decibel meter after your fifth complaint. My apartment never exceeded normal conversation levels, even during football games. Carol was backing into her apartment. Look, maybe I was overly sensitive. New building, you know? Just trying to maintain standards. Standards like filing false noise complaints and demanding evictions based on personal preference rather than lease violations? I'll stop calling. No more complaints. I looked at my clipboard. Carol, your lease is up for renewal next month. Her face went white. You can't evict me for complaining. That's retaliation. I'm not evicting you for complaining. I'm not renewing your lease because you've created a hostile environment for other tenants. Other tenants? It was just you I complained about. You also filed complaints about Mrs. Mord's to my vitals and altered to it. Chen and 2A for cooking smells. Demanded Jake's parking spot be reassigned because visitors shouldn't get convenient spaces. And sent three letters about the landscaping crew starting work at 8 a.m. Carol realized she'd painted herself into a corner. I was just trying to improve the building. By harassing every neighbor you had? No, Carol. You were trying to control everyone around you. I handed her a formal notice. 30 days. I'm converting 4B back to owner occupied. You can find a building where the landlord doesn't live next door to witness your behavior firsthand. She tried one last appeal. David, can we work this out? I'll be a better neighbor. You had six months to be a better neighbor. Instead, you spent it trying to get your landlord evicted from his own building. Carol moved out three weeks later. The building's been peaceful ever since. Mrs. Chen brought me homemade cookies last week. Much quieter now, she said with a smile. That lady complained about everything. Jake still comes over for football Sundays. The difference is now I don't have to worry about my neighbor calling to complain about the landlord to the landlord.